a local artist with a story to tell, the third segment in our Big Dreamer series and more, coming up today on Join the City True Stories. Joy in the City is a program highlighting people and organizations having an impact in our city. All too often, we hear about the problems and the dysfunction in our culture. But today, we are coming from a different approach as we take a look at the good things that are going on here in our community. I'm Bethany Marshall, and you're about to see what God is doing in our city. We want to thank our program sponsors, Park Home, for the donation of furniture used in our studio. Taylor Designs and Events for beautifully decorating our studio space and our platinum sponsor, Harry's Construction, for their ongoing support of Joy in the City. Today we will hear a story from Kim Williams, a local artist. As an eight-year-old, her parents and a teacher recognized her ability to draw and paint, and that is what she studied in college. She is most inspired by God's creation and her desire to bless others through her work. All right, well, thank you for joining me today. Uh, we're gonna talk about your art as well as your uh, big project. But before we do that, just tell me a little bit about yourself. My name's Kim Williams and I am from Johnstown. Uh, I worked a number of years in the publishing industry uh, for the True Democrat and Johnstown Magazine. So I guess uh, midway through my 50s, I came to the realization that if I died today, I would, and I met God and he said, what did you do with the gifts and the talents that I had had given you? Um, I wouldn't have anything to say to him. I, I would not, I didn't feel at that point that I would have had anything to give back to him. And that kind of terrified me. So I think at that point I decided I, I really need to, um, start trying to figure out why he put me here and what what his purpose for me really is. So I did went through a lot of self-help books. I think a lot of people would, you know, would would turn to that. Um, I, I always, you know, turn to the Bible, of course, first and, you know, read scriptures and read read things in that in that regard and let those things inspire me. But one one book in particular that you you know, they ask you questions, you answer. The thing that stood out was it, the, the book asked, what are your core values? And, and I really, I mean, you go through life and you don't really think what your core value is, you know, you just, you just live. And I think that the uh, most important thing to me was the thing that I would not compromise is my relationship with God. And so that had to be the top priority, but how could I fit his, the talent that he had given me in with that. And that's kind of how the, the project, you know, took off. That was the beginning. Well, when, when do you feel that you started to enjoy painting? When did you realize you had this gift? Oh, eight, um, whenever I was eight years old, um, and my parents were very encouraging. Uh, my dad saw some work that I had done and he worked with a fellow whose, whose wife was starting um, to teach art classes. And many years later, she's, she's told me this story, but apparently he tried three different times to get her to, to give me lessons and she just kept refusing. She said, I am not teaching young children. And, and finally she said, okay, just bring me some of her work. And he took some things into her. She said, okay, I think I'll, I'll, I'll try, I'll take her on. And um, yeah, so that was the beginning. And, and she taught me, you know, how to, to draw, how to, to begin doing pieces, um, things like that. Yeah. And so you've been painting for a while. What are some of the ways you've used your artwork over the years? Really haven't done anything, you know, had up until that point, I did not uh, spend a lot of time doing anything but going to work raising my, you know, uh, family, doing things with, with my husband and kids. And, and so after that, you know, my kids went off to college and, you know, they, we were kind of on our own is whenever I came up with this. So I really hadn't done anything up and, and that's what kind of terrified me that I really wasn't doing anything with it except for, you know, going to work eight hours a day. Um, and it wasn't in a design, you know, art, more of a creative uh, venue, 
but still it wasn't, I, I don't think it was what God had intended. So let's move into this, this project. This is a, a huge undertaking. Talk a little bit about how the, uh, the project started, the, the heartbeat behind it, and even a little bit of the process. Okay, so uh, you, you never do this alone. Uh, not something of this magnitude. Um, I had a, a lot of spiritual help, not only from God, but the, my friends. Um, so I, at lunchtime every day, I would, I would go sit by myself and I would, you know, contemplate the, the project and how I wanted it to look and, and, um, maybe the direction it should take. Uh, and as I was, I was praying one day and I knew my, my one, uh, good friend had gone to Jerusalem in, in a spiritual, uh, motivation as well. And, I was sitting there one day and just praying for her. And it turns out that, I mean, this is just one of the little stories, you know, the backstories that she at the same time was standing in the river Jordan praying for my project and, and asked God to help her to take back something for me to use, you know, for one of the pieces. And she said, I looked down and there was a coin in the water that by my foot. And of course she brought it back for me and I used it on a piece, but it was just like the connection, the connection with my, my spiritual friends like that, um, you know, that, and that have helped, have helped me get through the, the whole thing. Uh, another friend, her, her husband did production work. Um, whenever I wanted to do my Kickstarter campaign, he, he said, I'll, I'll help you, but I don't have a camera right now. Another good friend said, I have a camera, but I don't have the knowledge. All these people came together to, to create this, you know, Kickstarter campaign for me, um, asking me for no, no money because I just, you know, I didn't have it at that point. Um, God, God just, you know, had everything flowing because this is his project. He wanted it to happen he wanted me to be able to inspire other people, you know, through, through my artwork. Uh, and because I was honoring him, you know, he was making this all happen. I can remember, you know, the night before I started the, you know, doing 365 pieces, um, I basically fell on my face and, and just begged God to, you know, to let this happen because I had really put myself out there. There was no turning back. I couldn't, I could not, um, after the Kickstarter campaign started, all these people were looking for me every day, you know, watching the Facebook every day. What am I going to be doing? So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, that, I'm there and, and I'm, you know, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without, without the Lord's help. And I begged him, I said, please, you know, give me inspiration every day. He said, I promise to give you inspiration every day. If you show up with your paintbrush every day, that was it. So, um, yeah. And, and he never failed me every day. I had some new little inspiration to, to want to paint, to want to, you know, represent or create, um, yeah, it was, it was a long process. It was about a year before I actually got started painting. Um, and, and, and really the, the enemy likes to, um, uh, discourage you along the way. He, I sure. don't think that he was <laughs> too, uh, happy for this to happen because my camera broke. I, I needed to use that camera to, you know, take reference pictures so I could move on in the evenings. Um, I worked eight hours a day, nine hours a day, got home, ate dinner and immediately started painting. So it wasn't like I could, um, you know, say oh, I had all day to do this, this piece, you know, one little piece that eight, eight inches by eight inches, you know, and, and for me, that was a lot of real estate to have to, you know, sure create something on at that point, because I really hadn't, hadn't done that much painting, but um, yeah. So the, my computer wow. broke after I got all my files on there, I lost everything. 
the the files from you know my camp campaign the 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 wording I was going to use the the venue uh, you know trying to to get a venue for this that was all gone um, and and as I said the the Kickstarter campaign that kind of came together you know with my um, Christian friends that that were backing me up on on this yeah. whole thing but throughout the whole process God never he he, he just kept pushing me forward, you know, having other people keep pushing me, even at the end, when I didn't think that I had enough pieces for 365 pieces, I can remember um, um, me, me saying, okay, well, they're not, people are not, not going to stand here and count that there's 360. It's 11 foot wide wall, you know, and, and or 20 feet wide and 11 feet high. They're not going to stand here. I can, I can kind of like, get away with maybe, you know, a couple of these pieces not being, being there. And every friend, every Christian friend that i mentioned this to, they said, oh, you'll have enough. And then went on to another conversation, would not even, you know, um, say it's okay, you know, just do whatever. They, oh, you'll have enough, you know, God, God will make sure. And he did. I, I had, I had 12 pieces too many at the end, isn't it? Wow. Oh, and that was just how he works. Um, oh, and the other thing that happened too is somebody uh, it, before the whole project started offered me thirty thousand dollars if I would start the project right now. And so it was like maybe five months too early. I did not have anything in place yet, but I was working toward it. And he meant well. He was an investor, meant well. Um, but that that's just another way the enemy tries to you know, dissuade you from taking the path that, that God has had intended. So. So you, you did, uh, you have a full-time job. So this wasn't like you're just sitting at home doing nothing. So you're going to paint, you have a full-time job, then you uh, come home, then you paint. Uh, how did you keep the, the process of creativity to get something unique? So they don't start looking all alike. How, how did that journey go? Well, it was all inspiration, seriously. Um, you know, over the years, I had always wanted to be able to have the time, which I did at this, I didn't have the time, but I always wanted to have the time to sit down and paint every day. So I thought this is my big opportunity. And, and I would always get little inspirations of, oh, I, I see this pattern, this, um, a pattern on the wall with, with, shadows and it just inspired me you know it just made me you know feel something inside so you know I, I or animals or anything like that so once I, I I feel that that was um God's inspiration on me this is where he's directing me to go and yeah so I, every day I would come home and I'd always have because of you know, God said that he would give it to me and he did, you know, he, he inspired me. Sometimes it's not just paint. Sometimes it was maybe some little uh, rusty metal piece I found on the ground. It, it was just something that inspired me. I brought it home and worked a piece around that. So yeah, he always provides, always provides. And what have you seen uh, since this project was completed? How has this been viewed? How has it been discussed? What's the feedback you've been getting from it? Um, well, at the time, uh, I had so many people come and say, I, I couldn't see it just once. I, and one person told me I had to drive two hours, but I did it several times because I wanted, I, I just didn't see everything the first time or the second time or the third time I had to keep coming back to view this wall and it was up for maybe two and a half weeks. And, and then, you know, everything came down because people had um, through the Kickstarter had bought certain pieces and I felt responsibility to get those pieces to them. Um, so yeah. And it, it, she wasn't the only one that, that told me that I know so, so many people had told me that they came back you know, and, and the um, bottle works had put a couch in front of the wall so people could actually sit there and spend some time and, and view it. Um, I think that, that I'm, I, I hope that it inspired other people to, 
to, you know, um, find something that they were interested in doing. So, but I think that right now, what I'm doing with you is part of that, you know, what God's plan was clear back yeah. in 2015, you know, and since then I've had some other walls and, and some other, um, inspiring things happen too. So if you know a person or organization impacting our city, we want to hear about it. You can contact us at 814-944-1948 or by email at stories at jointhecity.org. Today's platinum sponsor is Harry's Construction, whose motto is, if you can dream it, we can create it. Recently opening Harry's Construction Kitchen and Bath Center so you, the consumer, can see examples of the variety of services provided by the team at Harry's Construction. Be sure to visit Harry's Construction Kitchen and Bath Center at 114 Main Street in Bellwood. You can also visit their website to see pictures of home improvement projects over the years. Thanks again to Harry Halk and the team for supporting Joy in the City. One of the things that that we do is we, we try to inspire dreamers um, to, to give them motivation. And for, for someone who maybe has a dream but doesn't have the opportunity to utilize it as they want, uh, you've taken a skill that God has given you. And even though it wasn't your full-time job per se, you still utilize that. Talk to me about some advice that you would give to someone who's kind of fighting through a journey of wanting to pursue something, but just doesn't have the time or the knowledge, maybe the education, but they're, they have a dream. How, how do you advise someone in that? Well, God has, has given them that dream for his purposes. Um, he is not going to fail you. I mean, you will, sh- you'll see success. He wants you to succeed in this or he wouldn't have given it to you. Um, I, the one thing that, that, that I found really profound in a, an exhibit that I was at in, in um, Art Prize in Michigan, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, a few years ago, I had 139 pieces instead of the 365. But um, there was a young man, uh, and it, I don't know if you know anything about Art Prize, but uh, people around the city, every single venue in, in uh, Grand Rapids has art in it. Uh, people go through any kind of businesses or, or um, uh, you know, uh, art museums or whatever. But uh, they, they take your card that you have printed up and there's a little number on it. Everybody has an individual number. And God bless my husband. He was standing outside handing out these, these postcards with, with my art and my number on it to come in to, to at least view the, the piece. 19-year-old kid takes the card, comes in. To, and it was at a coffee shop. It wasn't the venue that I, I, I wanted, but that's the venue that God gave me. And because this is where he wanted me to be, um, comes in, hands me back the card, says, I, I don't vote. Okay, that's fine. Um, but he spoke to me a little bit about my art and why he didn't vote. And so I said, well, what do you do? And, and he says, well, I, I write Christian lyrics. Oh, that's great. Where, where can I hear them? Are they on YouTube? What, what are you doing with them? He says, oh, I don't do anything with them. How, how, how do you let God give you something? And then you hide it under a basket. You know, you put, you put a basket on that light that God has given you. And so, yeah, I think I'm hoping that I got through because an hour later he came back and said, I voted for you. Okay, well, that's, that wasn't the point. But, you know, <laughs> I'm hoping that, that you know, he, he got the message that, um, yeah, he, God, God gives you these things. It's like we're only the vessels that, that God can use um, to inspire other people. And that's at the beginning of this whole thing in 20, 2014, really, whenever I, I got started, that was my biggest concern. You know, I wanna honor God with this. I, you know, I, it's not me that, that's looking for, for accolades or, or glory. I wanna glorify him with what he's given me it, or else nothing else matters. 
it, to me. Yeah, indeed. Now, sometimes when people are pursuing a dream, they uh, they start, they're excited, they're motivated, but the journey is often more challenging than they anticipated. Your journey was quite long. There wasn't just a one painting, one shot deal. Talk a little bit about um, maybe challenges or frustrations during that long journey to produce what you did. Oh, four days in. It was a Saturday. I had all day. I thought this is going to be great. I have, you know, all day. I, I Four days in, I, I had three paintings already. And the fourth day was my stumbling block. And, and, and I was trying to rely on my own, my own self instead of, instead of God, I think. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a long, a long 365. It, actually, it was more like two years, you know, uh, to getting to that point. But if I hadn't have had the, and this is probably why God had me do the Kickstarter campaign and had me posting things every day. People were looking for that. And I, I felt like I would let God down if I, if I didn't continue, if um, it, it would not have benefited him. You know, you can, you can dream small or dream big. Um, the, the big dreams are the dreams that, that show God's glory. You know, the little dreams, you can basically take care of them yourself. And it doesn't, it doesn't promote God. It doesn't, you know, um, lift him up. So I, I, awesome. I, I'm, I'm, you know, and, and really you do have to lean on God too, to, to get you through those, those tough times. So the day before the 365 um, opening for the 365 uh, inspired art project, before it opened, I had a waking dream. I, I don't know if you've experienced those, but it's kind of like, you know, right before you go to sleep or, or, or right before you wake, whatever it, but it, I knew that I wasn't asleep and it was like um, it was, I could see papers flying up to heaven. Did I tell you this? Or I could see papers flying to heaven, just one piece at a time. And all of a sudden I heard something behind me and I, and I, I thought it was an angel. And the angel said, um, God has uh, accepted your, your project. He has accepted your gift to him. And it was, it was, um, it was, it kind of took me aback, a and, and it, it was something that I go back to a lot too, that, okay, he's given me this and, and I did, I did the best that I could and I wasn't sure how it would be accepted, but, but he did, you know, and he left that message with me that, that he did accept it. And, and, and so I, I felt very grateful for that. But. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Are there any other projects that God's put on your heart to do that's a little bit unique moving forward? Well, the the Art Prize project was a challenge. It was a big challenge. I had to be in Michigan for three weeks. Um, and yeah, that, that was that was a big one, but it was 2017. Um, the and every time I come to a point in in you know, sitting down every day. I have three galleries now that, that sell my artwork. So, you know, I have to keep uh, producing artwork for them. Uh, I have a website, you know, I've I've been selling a few things off of there, Uh, but you know, God uses us to inspire others. And so I, I, I feel like um, I need to be motivated to, to keep doing that. And sometimes, um, I get to a point where, okay, I haven't sold anything in a while. Nobody's, you know, asked me for anything. So maybe, maybe my path, and, and isn't it funny how, how, you know, it got, you can spend so much time with God and God, you know, this relationship and he's pushing you forward. And then you get to a, a lull of maybe two weeks or a month and, and it's nothing's happening, but he's still working back there. And so then I, I pray and, and ask him, okay, is, am I still on the right track? You know, is there something else I should be doing? And 
immediately he contact he has somebody else contact me and say okay what well, i've sold this or i need this or uh, just recently um i was given the opportunity to have a solo show at nature uh, during the nature works uh, event at bottle works down here in johnstown so and that's what i'm working on now and, and that's going to be the, the entire venue that i have to fill so uh, he, he all, yeah, he, he always shows up and has somebody else show up whenever, whenever I need that little push or inspiration. Fantastic. Well, thank you for taking a few moments to talk with me today. And I'll make sure our viewers know how to view your art and uh, your website and so forth. And I just want to let you know how much I appreciate your time today. Well, I appreciate you taking time with me. And, and yeah, thanks a lot. As we close out today's show, here are a few thoughts from Troy Ferguson. Be attentive to the person in front of you and not the unseen enemy. When we plan out our days, our weeks and months, we have an idea of what we want to get accomplished in that time period. The goal is what we set our focus on until our enemy or our competitor disrupts that point of focus. For example, if you look at how our politicians promote themselves in this day and age, it's not on what they will do or what they will accomplish, but they focus on what their competitor isn't doing or hasn't done. That's called negative advertising and is often effective, but that's not how we should look at how we achieve our dreams and goals. Our attention needs to be on what's in front of us, in particular, on who's in front of us. I want to look at the character of Jesus. He didn't have a specific market he reached. He ministered to the person in front of him, whoever it was. At the time, he moved in compassion. It could have been the woman with the issue of blood. It could have been the blind man or someone with a simple fever. Jesus focused on the need in front of him and with compassion, he responded. In our journey, we have to be careful not to get caught up in what our competitor is doing or what the enemy is doing, but focus on what we're called to do. Many of you have heard of Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. He said this about his company. The most important single thing is to focus obsessively on the customer. Our goal is to be Earth's most customer-centric company. And that right there is a concept we should have with every relationship and interaction we have. Be attentive to the person in front of you and not the unseen enemy. And you will have a blessed week, I promise. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for watching Join the City True Stories. Let me encourage you to watch other episodes of people and organizations having an impact on our community on ABC 23 at 5.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. every Sunday. You can also catch us each week on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Until then, be encouraged because God is moving in our city.